basically introduce you to a new prophet who's going to come on the scene in the line. This is a fellow who was born in 216 AD, and he is a prophet in I'm going to tell you a few things about it. Nani is beginning to get a following, and he has some uh, similarities to Zoroaster. First of all, like Zoroaster, he's concerned more with ethics and ritual. He's not a ritualistic person. He's concerned with ethics, proper behavior, what is right, what is wrong. Okay? He's somebody who's interested in ethics. He's also somebody that does believe in the bifurcated world of good and evil, like Zoroaster did. However, there are going to be differences between Zoroaster and Nan. And Nanny is going to incur a great deal of opprobrium for his ideas. First of all, this is what Nanny believes. Nanny believes that while divine revelations, revelations from God, are always the same, they're always the same instructions love your neighbor, do good, respect life, respect property. While the divine revelations are always the same, the faiths that espouse them become corrupt over time. Espouse them, that believe in these principles, in these religions. They begin over time to become corrupt. In other words, at the beginning they believe these uh, precepts and they act by it. But then over time they become corrupt. They become liars. They become thieves, they become murderers, adulterers, so on and so forth. Now, remember I told you about Zoroastrianism. Is Zoroastrianism an optimistic or pessimistic? Now, what do we think, Mary? Very good. Okay, you didn't say that was certain, but it's here. Okay? Right, okay, it said like you sort of crazy. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, basically, it's an optimistic faith. Remember that for Zoroastrianism, Ohura Mazda will triumph over Ohura Yes? Well, Zoroaster, when he came into life, he became a prophet, it was more, you know, the fire and all that, the glow and all that stuff. What about him? Like, did he have anything that came to be a prophet? Well, we'll go over that right now. I'm going to tell you that Zoroaster believes that he's saying, that means given to, to the evil. Evil is an aberration, and it will be wiped out with the final triumph of the world of So basically, you're supposed to be optimistic and believe in the triumph of good over evil. Okay, good will win out. You have to help it, but it will win out. However, Manny has a different belief. Manny believes that evil will triumph over good in this, in this world, and that life had become engulfed by darkness. So he's going to believe that everything that's in the physical world is evil. Only good only exists in the spiritual world. Okay? So uh, this is going to be a problem. I'll explain to you why it's a problem for people now. If everything in the physical world is rotten to bad, then it doesn't matter, number one, who you serve, including a shop. And then there's another problem that one of the best ways to combat physical evil is to stop reproducing because you're only bringing more corrupt physical matter into the world. And when a shop or somebody in the state hears this, you need to come to the past and say, I can't have more people that I can ask to put my arm in. He needs to go and his ideas need to go. Uh, Michael Axworthy, in his uh, book, Iran, and Part of the Mind, basically finds some um, Manichaeanism, which will be the uh, people that believe in Manny's ideas, to be aberrant and life negating. He sees it basically as, a, as a, a religion that hates life. And I'm going to tell you that he's not the only one. There's a hadith attributed to the Prophet Muhammad that Muhammad <laughs> said that everyone that believes in one God will be saved except for the Manichaeans. <laughs> okay? Uh, that's how distasteful they were. 
Now, he believes that redemption can only come through the rejection of the physical world and the adoption of a harsh life of celibacy, which means you don't engage in the things that make you happy. Why bother? Because the whole world sucks. You know, best thing you can do is not reproduce, drop dead early, go into the spiritual world, and his followers take it even further than that. They associate things, is there a burden here? Uh, associate things with um, that are light with good, things that are dark with badness. I'll give you an example. You should only eat fruits and vegetables that are light and stay away from eggplants and fruits and vegetables that are dark. Light fruits and vegetables contain lightness and goodness. Dark ones do not. So I guess the next time you eat a plum, think about the evil you're doing. <laughs> or a fruit. Yes, Pat. Yeah. Uh, sure. I don't know idea to reproduce that other competitive person. Uh, the idea is any fast time you reproduce to create the more corrupt matter into a world governed by heat. The best thing to do is stop this and just whoever goes in the body when they go to the spiritual realm, that's where you stay, that's where you go. Okay, it's a very much life negating type of view in the sense that you, this life is not seen as something good. It's seen as, seen as a bait. Okay, this is a place where evil first dominates. The lie, murder, theft, so on and so forth. And the best way you deal with this is to disengage from it totally. Now we have Shirley, and then we have Rishi and then Lawrence. And uh, basically, uh, um, self-abnegation, and withdraw from the world. You withdraw from the world. Okay, and it's a okay. And Rishi got something today. He made a lot of money. Strangely enough, enough to make, enough to make the Iranian assassin is uncomfortable. And you're going to find out what happens to Manny, and he's going to get his exit to the spiritual world quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what is the difference really between a religion and a cult? I mean, you know, usually in many ways, I think it has to do with the uh, how, number one, how overt the dog is. I mean, dog may here is overt. It's not covert, right? Cults. Usually cults tend to be like that. And uh, this has quite a bit of problems, you know. Now, I'll tell you why. And uh, it actually will spread to Europe in the form of the Albigensian heresy and the Cathari. Okay, which actually adopt the same ideas. And I'm going to tell you something about that before I get to Lawrence, and then uh, basically uh, they make the way around. I'm going to tell you a story that uh, Manichaean ideas went to the Europeans in France, Spain, and Serbia. And when the Pope found out about it, I think it was Innocent III that did, he basically tells French and Spanish knights to extirpate the heresy. Get rid of the people that believe in these Manichaean ideas. Now, some of the French and Spanish knights approach the Pope and they go, okay, fine. He wanted us to kill these heretics, but he has a problem. How do we know who's a true believer from who is a heretic? And he said, that's okay. Kill them all, men, women, and children. God will know his own. <laughs> So much for turning the other cheek out. <laughs> okay, and Lawrence had something. Go right. Yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. Because obviously, if life sucks this much, maybe the alternative is to do what Jim Jones did in that Pianical, right? Put some poison in Kool Aid, walk down the hatch. You know, so uh, basically, uh, you would think that that would be the case. But since you're in this world, you make the best of a bad situation, and you don't uh, basically um, ferment your own demise, but you don't attach yourself to the evil things of this world. It's a weird kind of idea. Hopefully there are no Manichaeans here. I don't want to be told them bigger. <laughs> 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 Alexandra, are you a Manichaean? Oh, okay, I'll we'll make sure. Okay, go right ahead. That's something you want to say. The 
because of the fact that over time, and in the models are going to be deemed to be correct. And we'll talk because I'm not done with this. Okay? Yes. Yes. Um, Manny, I'm not part of any of the previous world developments that you were talking about. He would have been under the, what would have been considered um, uh, a Mazdian faith. He would have been raised in the Zoroastrian tradition. But he's going to develop his own ideas, as you see, um, that basically redemption can come only through rejection of the physical world and the adoption of a harsh life of celibacy. And we're going to talk about what happens to him right now. Okay? After Shapur dies in 272, Cartier begins to regain his influence. Okay? And he's going to regain his influence. Cartier will regain his influence in court because he basically views the Manichaeans as a threat and so will the new shop. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So, what's going to happen is, Mani will be arrested, and the nature of the death is unknown. They know that Mani dies around anywhere from about 272 to 274. I'm thinking 274 is more accurate date. And uh, basically, they're not quite sure about the nature of his death, other than the fact that his death is not natural. Okay, most people believe that he was put to death by having heavy chains thrown on top of him until his bones broke and he hemorrhaged to death. Okay, and uh, some of these elaborate, funky kind of executions are uh, are not uh, unusual in the ancient world. Okay, um, now um, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to uh, the followers of Manu. Many Manichaeans will be persecuted under Cartier. As Cartier regains influence, he especially hates the Manichaeans because he may, what they in effect are saying is that we're not going to reproduce. And of course, you know, Cartier is so astral, but you should reproduce. That's a blessing from a world author. Theologically, they're, they're opposed. Okay? Zoroastrianism knows there's evil in the world. But you have to give it room in order to grow in your life. And that's a decision you make. The whole world isn't evil. If the whole world was evil, how would you know what good was? Okay? So basically, according from a doctrinal point of view, Cartier finds this obnoxious from a secular point of view. The government is going to think it's not going to reproduce. So that means that everyone that joins your religion, I'm not going to have more people to tax. I'm not going to have more people to serve my army. So if I have enough of these lunatics, I won't have anyone anymore. Our population will dwindle down to nothing, and then where will my state be? Where will I be? Well, sure. Sure. Later on in Europe, the Albigensians would actually have, you know, divide themselves into the perfect. And the perfect were the elite that would not be produced. But they would also have supporters who were allowed to reproduce. Uh, but I don't want to get into that now. But the Manichaeans were hunted down like animals. And many Manichaeans will escape through the caravan routes into Central Asia. And they will establish communities and they'll establish communities in remote oasis settlements. Usually like the Tarim Basin in what would be Western China too. Okay? They escape into where, sorry? They escape in, through the Caribbean routes into Central Asia itself, Marcello, where they will establish communities in the remote oasis settlements. You're going to have to take them down places like Sulfon and various other and uh, they'll even be bordering one of the world's most impossible places. Um, they show it on the map, of course not. Um, <laughs> you know, right at that over here in uh, oh, southwest of China is one of the world's most formidable middle islands and deserts of top form of time. It's a turkey. Um, people debate what it means. For a long time, it was believed that it meant you go in and you don't come out. Okay, you're talking about a desert. I'm not joking. I'll be like 120 degrees. 
could if you pay on at 20 Okay, they say that the parts of the taco on the brain less than one inch. If you want to read about a former place places to reside in, read My Life as an Explorer by Sven Hayden. And uh, it's actually very exciting travel on by a major um, archaeologist and explorer of Central Asia, even though unfortunately he ended up, uh, you know, living in his old age as a Nazi supporter, which uh, doesn't make me all that long and fuzzy. Um, now, uh, basically, you're going to see the Zoroastrian community settle in Central Asia. I call them Mongol. Is that from okay. the Manichae and Manichae? The Manichae, uh... I'm sorry? The, the Manichaeans. Manichaeans. Manichaeans, I'm sorry. Manichaeans. Yes. So, uh, basically, if you had an interest in the Manichaeans, and they basically been like Buddhists and Muslims and Christians along the Silk Road, using the arteries of commerce to profess their faith, um, if you had an interest in that, there's a very good book about um, dispersal of religion through the Silk Road called The Religions of the Silk Road by Richard Foltz, F-O-L-T-Z. He was my mentor on the universe. And uh, he now is a Palestinian woman and he's going to say yes. Um, do the magazines still have the elements of the rash hand you know, and the fire and all that? And so they don't do none of that. Not even the gospel. They will be against divergence, a separate thing. They will have an origin for us when there's what that bifurcation of the world would mean. However, the Zoroastrians, the same not be looking at the um, The uh, Zoroastrians, once again, are a light of dominant faith. You know that it exists, but it's your duty as a human being to make sure that you come out. And you should enjoy the things of this life. You shouldn't basically, in effect, give them up. Just because you know that there are thieves in the world doesn't mean you shouldn't enjoy your television set, even though somebody might steal it. <laughs> All right. So, however, for the Manichaeans, it's a darker type of cosmology, evil tribe in this physical world. Get over it. Life sucks. You know? And uh, that's the way they basically see it. And we had Simeon and then Sean. Um, yeah. So, about. Um, the area of Doxa, is that what it's called? Uh, Those are the Towers of Silence in which the Zoroastrians disposed of their dead. And the reason why they did that, Zoroastrians associate dead bodies with corruption. Okay? Yeah, I, I just wanted to know sure. the name. Sure. Right? Because my computer um, changed it to dogma. Yeah. That's what happens when you get spell check. Yeah. And you have an illiterate computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Don't worry about it. Believe me. Whenever I was typing out uh, um, lectures on Iranian history with foreign words, a lot of foreign words, everything got underlined red. You know, it looked like a slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> so um, don't worry about that, Cynthia. And Sean had something to say. Yes. And basically, it's very similar to a whole amount. However, the deity appears to be weak. A whole amount is strong. The deity that the uh, Manichaeans believe in apparently is a deity that can't stop people from prevailing in the physical world. It's been defeated. So that makes a lot of people uncomfortable too, Sean. You know, um, what kind of religion do you want that's not going to give you comfort except basically telling you, you know, your life's going to suck until you die and then maybe things will get you. But in this life, you can't enjoy your eggplant parmesan, especially dark vegetable. You know, you can't, you know, any of that stuff. Okay, you can't enjoy a dance, can't enjoy, you know, dinner at White Castle, even though that might bring you to hell. <laughs> you know, um, and all that stuff. So to a lot of people, it's obnoxious because life can get even makes life look like a curse rather than a blessing. But remember, it's Zoroastrianism to Judaism, to Christianity, to Islam. When is God good and is bad? He's good. Do, do you hear God giving you the burden of life? No, the gift of life, right? So, but if you ever get a chance to read Richard Fultz's book, I think you like it very much. He's now teaching at the University of Florida 
those cheap bastards at Columbia University that want to pay what he deserves to get paid, which sometimes happens to scholars. And <laughs> 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 